Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with NGC Power Supplies. This presentation explains how to configure and use the different features of Rodin Schwartz NGC Series Power Supplies, including both basic and advanced functions. The NGC Series of Compact Benchtop Power Supplies is available as either 1, 2, or 3 channel models. Maximum power per channel is 100 watts, with each channel providing up to 32 volts, and at 10, 5, or 3 amps, depending on the number of channels. Some of the more important features of the NGC include ramp or arbitrary voltages, statistics and logging, and remote sensing. We'll cover all of these later in this presentation. The NGC also has advanced protection functions for avoiding dangerous output conditions, and supports remote control via USB, Ethernet, or GPIB. The NGC has both front and rear connectors for supplying voltage. On the front panel, standard 4mm banana plug connectors are used. The rear of the unit accepts a terminal block for attaching wires. In addition to supplying voltage, some of these wires can also be used for sense connections, another topic we'll discuss later in this presentation. The NGC outputs are both floating and galvanically isolated which means that it's possible to connect channel outputs in series or in parallel. By connecting the outputs in series, the NGC can provide higher voltages. Higher current can be obtained by connecting them in parallel. For example, we could combine three 32 volt channels in series in order to get an output voltage of 96 volts. Or we could combine three 3 amp channels in parallel for a combined output current of up to 9 amps. Basic operation of the NGC involves entering voltage and or current values and then enabling output. We first select the channel using one of the channel hard keys and then we choose voltage or current using the menu keys. Values can be changed in two ways. One is by using the rotary knob and cursors. These can also be used to change values during operation. Alternatively, numeric values can be entered directly by pressing shift which enables the numeric keypad. To confirm the entered values, either press the rotary knob or use the back key. Channels can be enabled or disabled on an individual basis using the corresponding channel on-off key. The final step is activating output for all enabled channels, which is done using the master on-off key. The NGC displays the output voltage, output current, and output power updated in real time. The color of the displayed values indicates the operating mode for each channel. White is used in editing mode, that is when the output is disabled. Values in green indicate that the channel is operating in something called constant voltage mode, and values in red indicate constant current mode. Let's stop for a minute to explain what we mean by constant voltage and constant current. Normally, the user of a power supply configures a fixed output voltage. In this case, the output current depends on the load resistance, as per Ohm's law. This is called constant voltage mode, because the supply will hold the voltage constant, even if the load resistance, and therefore the current, change. Note that if the load resistance decreases, the amount of current supplied will increase. A large drop in load resistance could therefore lead to current that is high enough to cause damage. One solution to this problem is an electronic fuse that turns power off when maximum current is reached. Instead of disabling the output entirely, another solution is to limit the current to a maximum value by decreasing the output voltage. In this case, the supply is said to be operating in constant current mode. Whether a power supply operates in constant voltage or constant current mode is determined by the user-specified output current limit. There's no button or menu item to toggle between these two modes. Let's look at an example of this on the NGC. We configure the output voltage to be 2 volts and enter a current value or limit of 400 milliamps. After enabling the output, the NGC will hold the output voltage steady or constant at 2 volts even if the current changes, as long as the current remains below the configured current threshold of 400 milliamps. Since we're in constant voltage mode, the values of voltage, current, and power are all displayed in green, 
and a small CV icon is displayed on the screen. Now we'll decrease the current value from 400 milliamps to 300 milliamps. The output voltage still starts out at 2 volts and remains constant when the output current changes, but only as long as the current limit of 300 milliamps is not exceeded. If, however, more than 300 milliamps would be drawn, the NGC automatically switches to constant current mode, lowering the output voltage until the output current does not exceed the configured current limit. When operating in constant current mode, values of power, voltage, and current are displayed in red, and a small CC is displayed. Although power supplies are usually operated in constant voltage mode so as to provide a fixed voltage, there are cases when we may want to have an output voltage that dynamically changes based on user configured patterns or sequences. The NGC supports two different functions for dynamically changing the output voltage, namely ramp and ARB. Let's take a closer look at what these are and how they're configured. As the name implies, ramp is used to create a continuous rise or ramp in output voltage. On the NGC, ramp is configured and activated separately on each channel. The output voltage starts at zero and then rises to the defined or configured voltage over a ramping time from 10 milliseconds to 10 seconds, after which the output voltage remains constant. To configure ramp on the NGC, press the channel hard key and then select ramp. Next, we enter the ramping time. In this example, we've set the time to one second. We then set activate to on and enable the channel using the channel on off key. To start the ramp output, we press the master on off key. In this example, the NGC will ramp its output voltage on channel one from zero volts to 10 volts over one second, after which output voltage will be a constant 10 volts. Unlike ramp, which linearly increases voltage, ARB switches the NGC output between different discrete voltage levels and current thresholds. A series of points is defined, each with a voltage and a current value and a duration. The output can either jump between these points, as shown in blue, or can be interpolated, as shown in red. This sequence can be run once or repeated, and the behavior at the end of the sequence can also be defined. The output voltage can stay at the last level or return to zero. To configure ARB on the NGC, press the ARB hard key. Note that like ramp, ARB is configured and activated on a per channel basis. This means that each channel can have a different sequence and these different sequences can be run on their respective channels simultaneously. To define the sequence for a selected channel, here channel one, press the edit button. Sequences are defined in the form of tables where each line includes voltage, current, time or duration, and whether interpolation is on or off. The number of states or lines is configured using endpoint, which is three in this example. To edit a line, change the IDX or index value and use the cursor keys to move between the values for editing. Here we're editing line two. The repetition value defines the number of times to cycle through the sequence with zero as shown here, representing an infinite number of cycles. On the second page, we can configure the end behavior. That is whether the voltage output should stay at the last level or be turned off at the end of a sequence. We can also save or load these values as a file. Sequences are stored in standard CSV format and therefore can be created or edited externally and imported using a USB drive. The triggered parameter defines how the arbitrary sequence is to be sent. If set to off, the entire sequence is sent as soon as the channel is on and master on off is enabled. On the other hand, if triggered is set to on, the behavior is controlled by the trigger mode. In this mode, the trigger key on the front panel is illuminated. If trigger mode is set to run, the entire sequence is played out when the trigger key is pressed. If trigger mode is set to single, each press of the trigger button advances the waveform to the next line or point in the sequence. Next, let's talk about the four different types of protection functions on the NGC. 
The first three of these, over voltage protection, over power protection, and over current protection, are user configurable and will be described on the next slides. There's also an over temperature protection function that protects the supply from excessive heat. This function is not user configurable. If any of these protection limits is reached, a red indicator flashes on the NGC display and a beep is sounded. Note that multiple protection functions can be active simultaneously. To configure over voltage and over power protection, press the advanced menu hard key and then choose OVP or OPP. Note that these are configured and activated on a per channel basis. In both cases, the user specifies the voltage or power limit. In the case of over voltage protection, there are two modes. Measured will disable output if the measured value is above the limit, whereas protected disables output if the user tries to configure a value that's above the limit. Since power is a function of current and therefore can't be directly configured by the user, over power protection simply disables the channel when the measured power level is exceeded. Over current protection is provided in the form of an electronic fuse. Like over voltage and over power protection, these are configured per channel. To configure fuses, first enter the current value as usual, and then press Advanced Fuse to specify the delay between when the fuse is stripped and when the output is disabled. Once a fuse is configured and activated, a fuse icon will appear in the channel display. Fuses can also be linked together, meaning that if the fuse is stripped on one channel, linked channels will also be disabled. In this case, a linked fuse icon appears, showing which channels are linked. A green fuse icon shows that the fuse has not been activated or tripped. If a fuse is tripped, that is, if the configured current is exceeded, then output is disabled, and a red fuse indicator is shown on the display. In this case, the output must be manually re-enabled. In the case of linked channels, as shown here, both the main and linked channels are disabled when the fuse is activated, and all channels must then be separately re-enabled. Now that we've covered the basic functions of the NGC, let's look at some of the more advanced functions. These include tracking, remote sense, data logging, and remote interfacing or control. We'll start by looking at tracking. On multi-channel NGC models, the channels can be linked or tracked. Tracking means that changes made to voltage or current on one channel are applied to the other channels. To configure tracking, press the Track Hard key, select the Hard key for the tracked channel, and then select Voltage or Current. The white box in both channels shows the values that are being tracked, and changing the value in one channel automatically changes the other channel by the same amount. Note that although voltage or current will change by the same amount, the absolute values may be different for each channel. The next topic is Remote Sense. The cables connected to a power supply output have resistance, and this will cause a voltage drop between the power supply and the load. In many cases, this very small drop can be ignored, but it can become significant with high currents or small load resistances. Remote Sense is a method used to monitor and compensate for the voltage drop in the supply leads. In Remote Sense, two leads carry the current as normal, but two additional sense leads are used to measure the voltage at the load. Because these sense leads are connected to a very high impedance in the supply, there's almost no current flow in these leads, and therefore almost no voltage drop. Based on the readings made using the sense leads, the supply can adjust the output to obtain the desired voltage at the load. Multi-channel NGC models have their sense connectors in the terminal block on the rear panel and single-channel models have the sense connections on the front. No configuration is required when using sense leads. The NGC automatically detects when sense lines are attached, and sense appears in the main display whenever remote sensing is being used. Another helpful function on the NGC is its ability to log data in CSV format. To set up logging, press the Measure Hard key, and then select Logging. The logging interval and the logging duration, or mode, can be configured. 
Log data is stored internally or to USB with a user-defined file name. Logging can be started or stopped manually on a per-channel basis or by means of the trigger hard key. The NGC can be remotely controlled over its standard USB and LAN interfaces or optional GPIB interface. These remote interfaces enable programmatic control. That is, they allow you to both configure and read values from the NGC using standardized Skippy commands. External software can also be used to connect to the NGC for creating or editing ARB files, taking screenshots, etc. Remote interfaces are configured by pressing the Setup Hard key and then Interface. Here, the interface type as well as the interface parameters are entered. Please see the documentation for more information and for a complete description of supported remote control commands. Let's end with a brief summary. The Rodin Schwartz NGC is a family of compact benchtop power supplies that are available with one, two, or three independent outputs. The NGC is easily configured using the front panel, but also can be remotely controlled. Other important features covered in this presentation include ramp and ARB, a variety of protection functions, channel tracking, remote sense, and data logging. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with NGC Power Supplies. If you'd like to learn more about the NGC or power supplies in general, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.